So I'm gonna try something new here today, which is making a shorter video for my channel. I wanna talk about new relevant things that come out. In this case, it's Hades 2, which just had like a surprise drop the other day. And the reason is, is because I make one video a month right now, which only equals to 12 a year. And a lot of stuff comes out in that time that I miss a lot and I don't get to talk about, like Helldivers 2 or Doom Part 2. So I don't wanna miss this one. And I wanna talk about this game because I love Hades. And in fact, there is a lost episode of this channel that was never fully made, which was my review on the first game, Hades 1. I mentioned this in my Q&A a while back and like a bunch of people wanted to see that video. And trust me, you do not wanna see it. Roguelike games are so great because it's just like, you can get like, usually, well, a roguelike if you don't know. <clears throat> <laughs> That's what starting a YouTube channel looks like. Oh, and we're gonna call it the Sather Scale. Insert roaring applause. Some of you might be like, wait, isn't that kind of like what Charlie does with the moist meter? No, it's not kind of like what he does. It's exactly what he does. <laughs> the, um, this is pretty much exactly what that is. So if you're unfamiliar with Hades, Hades is an action RPG roguelike. From the isometric perspective, it's got this really cool art style that's like anime mixed with like comic inky black art. And it's a total hack and slash onslaught of just killing a ton of enemies through dungeons. The first time I saw the game, I wasn't super interested. I was intrigued with the art style and stuff, but I played games like Diablo and where you could customize your character and get a bunch of gear. And I saw that Zagreus, the main character of Hades 1, didn't really change, so I was like, no thanks. Thank you. And then I played the game and over a hundred hours of gameplay later, it cemented itself as one of the best roguelikes I've ever played in my life. It's made by an indie team known as Supergiant Games and they have a phenomenal track record and Hades is no exception. If you are questioning whether to play it or not, freaking play it. Play Hades 1 and I would say play Hades 1 before you play Hades 2. You could play Hades 2, but I think you'll miss a lot of those juicy cameos in this game and understanding the story. So in Hades 1, you were the son of Hades, the god of the dead, in hell and you were trying to escape out of hell and and make it to the surface and defeat your father, Hades. In this game, you play as uh, the daughter of Hades, Melanomi, Mel Melanoi, Melan Melanie with an O somewhere in there. And this time, the Hades family is trapped in the underworld by the Titan of Time. So you're playing as the daughter, trying to go deep into the underworld to go and save them. The game involves like a contemporary take on the Olympian gods. It's so cool to see each one of them show up and boost your abilities. And a lot of roguelikes will get like new guns or like bonuses of ammo or like turret stuff, whatever it is. Thinking, I'm sorry, I've been playing a lot of Brotato. <laughs> but in this game, it's like the gods infuse your abilities to make it look different. In Hades 2, you have these particle effects that are just gorgeous that are all coming from different weapons that you can get in the game. I think right now there's five. In the first one, I was a bit of a shield main, but you have to use like all of them to get all their different rewards and different types of that weapon. Hades does a great job of making you like combine your attacks together, whether it's your normal attack, your special attack, or in Hades 1, it was like this like blood dart thing that you could shoot out that would change based on the Olympian gods that affected it. And in Hades 2, they went with a very similar formula, but enough changes to where it feels very fresh again. So this time around, Kind of freaks me out at first because they have like an ammo system for her, kind of like a mana bar. And at first I wasn't sure if you could like really regenerate, but it regenerates every time you go through a level and there's a bunch of upgradable ways to make it regenerate really fast. She feels just as powerful as Zagreus and in some cases much more. Kind of depends on what you build in this game. And that's what makes it so fun and this roguelike so replayable. You can make so many different builds, whether it's like a destructive mage or like a quick scythe wielding rogue type of girl or just a straight up big ass battle axe bitch. <laughs> <laughs> it's awesome. She feels really great. The game runs really smooth. I will say it's interesting in the first game I remember the the dash was like constantly being used like every second It felt like with Zagreus you could get like multiple dashes for him And there was also this like questionably broken Olympian bonus to his dash that gave him a shield as he dashed in this game Melanoi has a dash but also a sprint afterwards Which can be really cool if you like pair that with Poseidon's ability where you just turn into this like water pumping God train thing moving around of course the first run and I'm sure a lot of other Hades players tried this with Hades 2. I was like, maybe I can get to the end of the game, this first try. But it's borderline impossible, mainly because this jackass with wings and a gun gives you a crazy debuff that makes everybody's damage increase by like 10% per encounter. It's nuts. But I totally get it for story beat purposes from the developer's point. Don't worry, I'm not, it's not a criticism. But it's great. It's still super challenging. It's not like um, Ghost of Tsushima where like you feel like you mastered the game after a while. Hades just feels like it's just constantly getting harder. You're coming into new characters characters with different abilities all the time. There's a lot of times you'll be frustrated about how you died. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, what a, ah. 
What a mistake. But there's also times where you kind of do want to die to see like what part of the story is more revealed. Or maybe you got the ingredients that you needed to like craft a new weapon. A huge thing that I love about Hades 2 and Hades 1 is the way they tell their story. They give you pieces of their story bit by bit through every cycle. They don't just blast you with exposition to make you understand their world. They let you go and play their fun game and make you want to understand it. They don't just make you stand there and talk to a boring guy about his uninteresting world for 20 minutes. Like everything in the Olympian gods, which by the way, like I want to know like how many more gods am I going to meet and interact with or like ones that I haven't thought of yet. Like they're so they're popping up all over the place in Hades too. You know, the game is in early access. So there's some like placeholder art for some of the characters and stuff. And I can't wait to see what they look like. I got to say again, the art style in this game, you artists that made this game are some of the most talented, amazing artists I've ever seen. It is it is eye candy to look at these things. Like look at the, like the, the use of yellow on Hecate. And you might be like, what yellow on? It's right there. Look at how gorgeous that is. That is attention to detail. I don't even know what that light source is coming from, but it works. It works on her. It's genius. Everything in the voice, everything is so freaking polished and good. Super giant. You kick ass. I love it. I also want to make sure I talk about that difficulty where I, I really do love the feeling that Hades does really well of when you're getting really far in the game, it does feel like the pressure and the stakes are getting so high. Like, am I going to be able to reveal this next part of the story? Like, how much longer am I going to get away with like this one last life that I'm on? And it, it just gets the adrenaline pumping and it gets you into a state of flow and everything just works so seamlessly. I literally have not encountered one bug in this entire game. I don't think I did in Hades 1 with like 100 hours of gameplay. So it's all on you. If it's if you, if you die, it is your mistake. You didn't see something coming. You didn't see something underneath you that was going to explode. What are we supposed to do? Or maybe you just you just weren't strong enough. You know, I haven't seen the Before You Buy yet from Game Ranks on uh, Hades 2 yet, but I could totally see Jake Baldina going like, if you like Hades 1, you're gonna like Hades 2 because it's definitely more Hades. <laughs> and that's what I will say about Hades 2 is, it, it is a lot more of the same, but it's done to a superb degree. It, it is my only like, partial criticism on the game is that it, it feels very parallel. Like I even played some Hades 1 before making this video just to sharpen up on how that game felt comparatively to this game. They've done everything very, very well but I would have liked to see just a little bit more innovation as far as some of the systems go. Like one example I can name is, uh, I was never a big fan of the blood dart thing that Zagreus had in Hades 1, and I was surprised that they made that cast move the same on every weapon that you had. And they replaced that in Hades 2 with like a snare move that, that she has as like a mage witch. And that is cool and it feels really powerful and I like it, especially for the first weapon that you have, the staff. But I was kind of hoping that the other weapons also had like a special you know snare ability or, or some sort of utility swapped out with each weapon, not just the snare over and over. There's a couple things like that, but the game is still in early access. There is a couple things that I don't want to reveal or spoil anything, and I haven't unlocked everything yet. I, I've, I think I've gotten pretty close. I'm like 25 hours in right now, and I'm doing pretty well. Uh, I literally played for seven hours today straight. Dude, this game is like so easy to keep on going. You just keep unlocking one little new thing that leads to another part of the story to be revealed, and that like is super intriguing because it reveals this like whole new location and yada, yada, yada. I don't want to spoil anything again, but it's just awesome. Awesome. It, you're gonna love it. You will not, I, I don't, I'm trying to think of like the player that wouldn't like this type of game. Like it's not like Civilization or something where it's it's kind of made for somebody. I think pretty much everybody is gonna have fun with this game. It's very easy to pick up. It's very understandable. It's pretty funny to a degree. It's like, it's just got great concise writing. I wonder if they have a rule at Supergiant, by the way, that the dialogue boxes that show up, I swear, there can only be like a max of like four button presses before the conversation ends. And I love that. Again, I love the way they piece out the story like that. It's just like, quick and then you're playing the fun game again. That's like the best way to do a story in a roguelike. Also, if any of the Hades 2 developers watch this, could you guys add like a back button on the dialogue boxes? Cause sometimes I actually skip through them a little too quick and miss a crucial piece of dialogue and I wish I could just go back on that. That's all. So let me give the first ranking on the Sather scale scale. I would say it's like an, it's a nine out of 10. It's even, I would say it's probably in that first, you know, 9.2, 9.3. I'm giving one point off due to a couple of things. Number one is just what I talked about a little bit earlier. It is very, very similar to its prequel. But that's almost for good reason because the prequel kicked fucking ass. <laughs> but yeah, I would just like to see a few more innovations that really kind of change the game's dynamic a little bit more. Also, I think it would be weird to like start off the Sather scale with like a 10 out of 10 on the first episode. So sorry, Supergiant, that might have some bias in this, <laughs> in this more technical ranking that you got. I highly recommend it. I'm sure if you already played Hades 
one, you're excited to play this game. And if you've already bought the game and played it, let me know what you think about it in the comments. And let me know what you think about this, this format, this whole Sather scale thing, if it's something cool, if you vibe with it, or if I should just go back to making one video a month. I, I'm already living the dream with this job from your guys' support. So but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope you liked it and I'll see you guys in the next one. It changes all, oh my gosh, I just realized I'm gonna like, like I'm not editing all this stuff. I don't wanna like edit the shit out of this video. So there might be like less like, as I'm saying this thing, a picture of it shows up because that's what takes out a lot of my time. Okay, how do I start? All right, let me, let me try this again. It adds like a little bit of humor and drama to the mix, especially like the story is actually really good. Holy shit, there's a lot to keep track of in my head. <laughs> this is tough, this is tough as shit. Do I got this? You got this. Thank you.